G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I'm returning to one of my old workflows which is adding shared parameters to Revit families uh, but this time we're looking at it in Revit 2020. So yes, this is technically a remake. Um, so some of my more popular videos I'm going to be making a remake for and releasing the scripts to my GitHub um, so other people can use them because I have been hearing there's a lot of bugs and things not working if the script is built in a particular way in a particular version. So this one should work in Revit 2020. So this is actually my most popular video um, for some reason. It's the first Dynamo video I made, which is maybe why, um, but it's essentially when I was just getting started. So I was sort of just learning Dynamo at this time and wanted to, wanted to share a workflow. Um, I've revisited it and found a much more efficient way to do it, um, which I'll share with you now. So it's actually my top video um, of my whole channel, which is a bit strange, but um, cool. <laughs> So essentially, um, you'll need a shared parameter file in order to run this script. So if you don't have one available, there will be one being uploaded um, to my website eventually for my business, just because I'm gonna be developing a template for the industry, um, but it's not gonna be out yet. So if you do have one on hand, that'd be great. If you're not sure how to make one, um, feel free to watch one of my earlier videos, which is Mastering Revit Shared Parameters, um, where I show you how to build a shared parameter file. So today's goal is essentially to add to a Revit family um, a whole bunch of custom parameters that you want to specify from your shared parameter file. We're gonna be using an Excel file to control this and then using Dynamo to pull on that Excel file and set the parameters. And we're gonna be using the custom package of Orchid, um, essentially to use the add shared parameter node. So originally in my old version of the workflow, I used um, quite an old experimental node. Um, I think it was called dyn underscore add shared param, and it hadn't been revisited by the package maker for about three years, um, whereas this one is being regularly updated, so it's a much safer workflow. So I'll be using Dynamo 2.3.0, which is tied to my Revit version of 2020 point, uh, I think it's point 2.1 hotfix. Uh, but essentially, if you're on the latest version of Revit in 2020, this will work the same way for you. So without further ado, let's jump into Dynamo. Um, so I'm just gonna jump in and I'm gonna make a new family. So I'm just gonna make a generic model family. Just a fresh family, no tricks, no strings uh, by default. There's no parameters except for default elevation and a whole bunch of defaults. But what I wanna do is actually add a lot of shared parameters from my shared parameter file. So specifically, I'm gonna be adding parameters that I commonly need to add to my families when I build them or when I revisit them. So this is a whole bunch of authoring parameters, which are all text parameters, except for one URL parameter. As well as that, um, I'm gonna be adding a code and a comment, um, or what I call data parameters, and they're both gonna be text parameters under identity data. And then as well as that, I'm just gonna be adding uh, three generic material parameters, because most of my families use materials and material parameters to control them. And we wanna do this all using Dynamo. So what I've already pre-configured here is an Excel file. So essentially the first column is the names of the parameters that I want to add. It's important that the names should be arranged in alphabetical order. So I believe that there's bugs in the node from Orchid, which occur if your parameters fall outside the order, they appear in the shared parameter list in alphabetical order. So by group, by name. So at the moment here, um, I'm essentially always keeping my group names in my shared parameter file in the same order as the parameters themselves by using a common prefixing acronym, um, which I believe I cover in my shared parameter video as my preferred workflow. But essentially the way it looks in my shared parameter file is that every single section of my shared parameter file looks a little bit like this. So the group, it starts with an acronym and then every single other parameter starts with a BG, underscore and then that specific acronym. So everything falls in the same technical order, which is really important because um, it seems like it has problems if say the materials came before the authoring fields. It seems to struggle with this. Um, so yeah, that's really important it seems. Um, I haven't seen it written anywhere, but it just seemed to be something I experienced. Um, occasionally the node will give warnings and still work anyway. So it is a little bit of a temperamental node, uh, but it should typically work. Beyond this, this is the shared parameter group. 
from my shared parameter file. I've actually set up some data validation in this file, which I'll upload to my GitHub. But what I recommend you do is that you add your shared parameter group names in this section of the shared parameter of the Excel file. Um, and you'll find that that will change what the validation allows for. You can actually get rid of the validation if you want as well. I recommend you keep it though. So if you go into data and you go over here to data validation, you can either clear the validation or you can just update the range that it's being validated from. And that essentially gives you a drop down to work with. Um, if you want any other Excel tips like that, I've got a video on my channel, um, the only Excel video I've ever made. And I cover about 20 to 30 sort of tips and tricks in Excel like that. Uh, but I won't focus on those too much. As well as that, now I've got the parameter type and the parameter group. So the parameter type is simply just the, the type of the parameter itself. So if I go to one of my shared parameters in my shared parameter file, let's say this authoring field. So when I created the shared parameter, I nominated it as, as a text type parameter. So you will need to go and pull on that value here. Again, I've created a delimited set with the most common types of parameters that I use. It's, it's important to note these all come from the common discipline. Um, so if you're a structural engineer or an electrical engineer, for example, you may need to update the parameter types that I've listed here to suit what you need. Um, as well as that, now we have the parameter group. So this one's a little bit more tricky. So the parameter group is essentially the built-in parameter group behind the scenes and at the surface, it's the parameter group that we use in Revit. So these are essentially, um, if I go to add a parameter, it's essentially uh, this here, this, this group parameter under, and it's any of those essentially. So what I've done is I've listed the most common ones that I use to group my parameters, and I've figured out the corresponding built-in parameter group name. So these are actually using just what's called a lookup formula. So when I change these, you'll see that it goes and finds the corresponding built-in parameter group. And the way I've done that is I've just lined up them here. So I've said construction, and then the built-in group is parameter group construction. And again, this technique is in my Excel video if you're interested in learning more about the lookup function. But essentially, you can just leave this column alone. It does all the job. It's really just this one that goes and points, points it to, to the right place. As well as that in the end, um, instance or reporting, either just say yes or no. In this case, I'm going to say no for all of them because I don't want to make them instance-based or reporting, but it's up to you. It depends on how you need to pre-configure your families, um, what sort of parameters you're going to load into them. Anyway, that's our Excel file. So I'll just minimize this and we'll just go back and we'll jump into Dynamo. So I'll just boot up Dynamo 2.3 and we'll get started. So I'm going to make a, a new script and I'll just expand Dynamo. So the first thing we need to do is import Excel. I'll go to manual mode as well and just save my script. Uh, let's just call it test2. Okay, so I'm going to get a file from path and I'm going to get a file path. So our file path, we're going to path to that Excel file. And then file from path, we're just going to path here. And we'll feed this into our import Excel. Pretty standard workflow in Dynamo, pretty pretty commonly done for getting Excel data. You could use the Bumblebee package as well um, to kick off this, this uh, workflow. All right, so I'm gonna get my sheet name. And I think in this case, I've just called my sheet standard, which is where my parameter data is. And I don't wanna show Excel and I don't wanna read a strings. So I'm just gonna feed a false into both of those. And I'm just gonna create a group and just call this import Excel. And essentially this is just to get all my Excel data. So as soon as I run this, it should give me a big list of essentially all the rows in my Excel file. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a big code block because some of my followers have been requesting that I use a little bit more design scripts in my, in my code, which I actually use a lot more now because it makes the code more efficient to read and work with. So I'm just gonna double click and make a code block. And I'm just gonna make a header row by doing two forward slashes. And I'm just going to call this process Excel data. So I want to actually get, I want to drop the first row of my data and then transpose it into columns. So I'm going to define a variable called dropped just to get create a list that has a dropped item. I'm going to call on DS core and I'm just going to go back and call on a list and I'm going to call on drop items and I'm going to call on a variable called data and I'm going to drop the first item. And what we should get is that variable data. And then because we're declaring a variable here, it only becomes an output, 
which is ideal. So we're going to take our Excel data and drop the first row. Cool. And then as well as that, we want to transpose our data. It's going to be data underscore T for transposed. Again, we're going to call on the DS core list. And we're going to go transpose this time. And we're just going to transpose our declared variable of dropped. And now we should get all our data as columns. And there you go. You can see we've got our parameter names, parameter groups, etc., etc. So what we want to do now is start making these into rows so we can output them as variables to the next node. So I'm just going to call this values for shared parameter node. So first we're just going to say shared parameter names as a variable equals data underscore t for the transpose data. And we'll just take index zero in square brackets. What this would give us is the first index of our list or our first column without its header. We're also just going to get our shared parameter groups and we'll just get index one. Next, we're just going to get our parameter type. So I'm just copying this as I go just to save some space, save some time. You can too. Um, and then we'll just get the built in parameter groups. So BI PGS. It doesn't matter what you call your variables, just as long as you use a name um, that isn't taken up by a function in Dynamo. So we're going to go index four in this case. Because remember that in our table, um, we were using a lookup value. So column three is technically redundant from an Excel perspective in Dynamo. It's really just there to get uh, column five or index four. So that's all we need it for. And the last thing I'm going to do is we're going to get whether it's an instance parameter or a reporting parameter. And this one we have to be a little bit more creative because remember we were saying yes or no in this case. The problem with this is that this isn't actually a true Boolean in Dynamo. So you can see it's just the word no, or it's a string. What we need to do instead is check if it equals the string yes. What this will do instead is run that, that check across the list and returns a true or a false as a Boolean, which is perfect. So that's exactly what we want. We're gonna check if we've got reporting parameters as well in the last one. And again, it'll be the same result in this case. So we've just got all of our Excel data processed in one big code block. Instead of using lots of separate nodes, um, we can be much more efficient with how we run our data. Um, cool, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our ORCID nodes. So in ORCID, I believe under Revit family parameter, there's a node called add shared parameter. We also need the family documents. So we're just gonna search for current because we need to get the current document node from ORCID itself because it, use, it, it expects the ORCID current document, not the out of the box one. I believe this is done by the package author because they need to reserve some, some language space um, that isn't interfered with by changes in Revit itself or in Dynamo in the future. Uh, but I might be wrong there. Anyway, we just go parameter name, group name, type, group, instance, reporting. And we don't need to put in the tooltip because shared parameters, their tooltip is built into the shared parameter itself when you create it. So that's pretty easy. So it's actually a really simple script. Um, we might get a warning at this point. Sometimes I've been seeing warnings with this node. I'm still trying to figure out exactly why it occurs, but it does seem to work anyway. So we may or may not see a warning. So we'll just call this add parameters. And before I run this, I might actually just show you a cool little tool called Monocle, you can download off the package manager. It's got a lot of different things in it. Um, the thing that I mainly use it for is just the package usage dog. So essentially it's just, it's a meme, um, but it detects common packages in Dynamo. And it also gives you the option to annotate custom nodes just by adding a little note. And immediately you can see which nodes are custom, which is really handy. Um, especially when you're trying to document a script for other people to use. So you will find that as I upload these to my GitHub, they will tend to be annotated instead, whereas my older scripts probably won't be. All right, so we're ready to run at this point. Um, so I'll just minimize Dynamo a little bit and we'll run. We'll see if we get a warning or not. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Seems to vary from my experience. So we did get a warning. Um, it does seem to think that they're all nulls. However, when you come to the family, you'll probably notice that it still worked. So it did, it still worked. Um, so it's got all the authoring fields that came in correctly. So you can see the URLs come in as a URL, which is great. It's got all the materials that have come in and it's also got the identity data fields that I requested. So everything in the Excel files worked. I believe that this warning relates to the way that the node executes 
from what I've noticed, it executes in stages. Um, it adds parameters one at a time or in sets uh, based on their group. Um, so there might be some logic behind why it's triggering a warning. Maybe it's doing one set and it's trying to do the whole set again, missing the first part because they're already in the family. Um, but there's some logic to it that I can't quite figure out. But it works as far as I can tell um, in Revit 2020, of course. Um, so a nice simple little workflow and a really handy tool that you can just run as a play button from Dynamo Player in future when you're building families, um, which I've done quite a lot in the past. So this script and the support file for it will be on GitHub by the time this video is released. Um, I will try to upload most of my scripts as I build them from now on to GitHub, um, just so you've got them for reference or if you're too busy to build them, um, you still get the script and get to play with it and save yourself some time hopefully. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for today. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, you will notice that my business is now in my signature. Um, I've launched my business at the start of this year. If you're working in Australia and you're ever looking for any BIM consulting services, especially in regards to Dynamo and workflows, which is one of my specialties, feel free to get in touch with me um, through my website um, and also just through my LinkedIn if you like. Um, as well as that, if you're not already following and subscribing to the channel, um, I recommend that you do so. I release videos twice a week and I'll continue to do so for a very long time. Um, so thanks for watching today. Um, hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.